Hello and welcome to Easter Egg Hunting, a show that dissects your favourite games looking for hidden secrets and easter eggs. We're going to try our hardest to show you all and any easter eggs that we can find in any game, and we'll even be throwing in a bit of trivia as well. We're now at the final part of the Metal Gear Solid Easter Egg Hunting extravaganza, so we're just going to finish off with all of the other ghost photos available from the last episode, and then finally a small section of easter eggs that we might have missed suggested by you in the comments. And as always, sorry for any poor pronunciations. Kunio Takabe can be found at Otakon's lab if you stand behind the glass shielding at the west of the lab looking to the east. Note the police notes poster on the left hand side for a better idea to match up. Hideki Sasaki can be found in the commander's room where you fight Mantis looking straight onto the three pictures on the back wall. Yoriko Shimizu is hiding in the caves after you pass the first crawl space and look back at it towards the south where you entered from. Shiru Mukaide is north from the previous shot in a little side section of the caves with a small patch of snow and a puddle of water as you look on the floor. When taking this photo, ideally the small patch of snow near this puddle should be in the bottom right of the photo. Ikuya Nakamura is sneakily hiding on top of Meryl's spilled blood when you fight Wolf for the first time. And then in the same area, Yoji Shinkawa can be found at the very tower that Wolf was shooting you from, looking towards the west wall. Shigeo Okajima can be found on top of the DARPA chief's dead body in the prison cell after you're captured. Makoto Sanoyama can be found directly behind the torture machine after you escape, looking straight at the back of it. Kumi Seito is hiding on the comms tower A roof, right before you abseil down the side. There's some metal rectangular equipment in the middle of this area which you should stand southeast from and take the picture facing north to all the debris in front of you. Just as a pre-warning, Liquid will be shooting at you from the hind D here, so be careful. Scott Dolph is a little bit difficult. After you abseil down comms tower A, you need to centre yourself on the walkway between the north and south towers as well as between the railings there. Face west and then point the camera down between the top and the middle bars of this railing. It's very difficult so try matching it up to this photo. Takashi Kinbara is inside the warehouse entrance to the blast furnace in the snowfield as you look down the staircase leading towards it, which is also where you change to the second disc. Motoyuki Yoshioka is at the blast furnace on the west side wall where the crane is, as you stand on an extruding piece of scaffolding where there was a guard. If the crane gets in the way of the shot, it doesn't matter. Hiroyuki Togo is in the steaming pipe room in the blast furnace, obtained by standing in between the two steam jets on the left side of the room, and looking at the northern wall where some Nikita missiles are hiding behind. Satoshi Hirano is at the first cargo elevator before you press the button for it, as you look over the north edge of it down towards the abyss. Motusada Mori is in the middle cargo elevator room by standing in the eastern elevator and taking a picture of the southern wall. Kazunobu Uihara is at the bottom of the cargo elevator chains where you stand at the south end of the elevator, face north and then take a picture of the first few ceiling lights. Soi Toyota is on the middle container in the room after you beat Raven, which can be done from any angle. Yutaka Nagishi is hiding in the northern warehouse after Raven's fight, with all the turret cameras all up the walls. Throw a chaff grenade, run to the middle of the north to south connecting bridge, and then aim at the water flow to your left. Mineshi Kimura is on the highest floor of Rex's hangar as you head towards the platform towards the cockpit. Stand on that metal scaffolding, aim towards the railgun of Rex, and then take the picture, but make sure that you get the tip of the railgun within the frame. Ikiro Kutomi is in the command room where the PAL keys are entered by looking at a southern monitor which looks a bit like a map. And finally, Takashi Misutani and a few other people are found in the supply room, where in the lower left there are three pairs of barrels. While standing with your back to the middle pair of them, aim at the southern set of them and then grab the last photo. However, make sure you throw a chaff grenade beforehand. As you can see, this totals up to 42 ghost pictures, meaning that these photos can fit perfectly onto six PS1 memory cards. However, a rumour about a 43rd ghost has also been floating around, where the game's translator, Jeremy Blaustein, can be found on Sniper Wolf's dead body in the snowfield. The theory is that he might have been removed due to the inconvenient additional use of a seventh memory card just for his one spare photo, and others say that because he might have been seen as just the translator, he may have been cut out entirely. However, almost no information has been disclosed, so it still remains a rumour and a mystery. And now for any easter eggs that we might have missed ourselves or ones that you guys have picked out for us in the comments. And again, these will be chronologically arranged. With thanks to this user over here, in the Twin Snakes, in one of the pre-game briefing videos, Campbell tells Snake the mission objectives, to which Snake replies, So, someone needs to penetrate, gather intelligence and report back. Sounds like a spy movie. Which of course, references the James Bond inspirations behind this game. With special thanks to this user for first pointing this out, we also mentioned in the very beginning of the series about the voice actors using pseudonyms to protect themselves, and that David Hayter uses a false name, but only in the manual of the game that I displayed. It turns out that Hayter's Sean Barker identity is actually the name of the main character he portrayed in the sequel to the American film adaptation of the Guyver series, Guyver Dark Hero. Thanks to this user over here, there's an alternate ending to Ocelot's boss fight. Instead of beating him with your SOCOM pistol, leading him to say, You're pretty good. 
Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. Beat him with some C4, and then he will instead say that he's actually disappointed with the quality of the fight. We can confirm that this is true, but unless it's just the PAL version of the game or we did something wrong, on multiple tries we couldn't get the message to show up. With special thanks to this user, during the corridor before Otacon's lab, the ninja utters off-screen the names of train stations in the Miyokin line, operated by Nosei Electric Railway in the Kansai region of Honshu, Japan. <laughs> It does sound very vague, but he actually lists these following train stations. And again, sorry for any poor pronunciations. Kawanishi no Siguchi, Kenu no Bibashi, Takiyama, Uguisu no Mori, Suzumigataki, Tara, Erano, Ikinotori, Uneno, Yamashita, Sasabe, Kofudai, Tokiwadai, and Miyokenguchi. And with thanks to this user over here, flipping over to the Twin Snakes, as we get inside Otacon's lab itself, if we try not to get the screen destroyed during the ninja fight, the television next to the GameCube console on the desk will be displaying the GameCube home screen. Very cute. And one thing we completely glanced over and missed ourselves until the last minute was this. In Otacon's lab, still on the Twin Snakes, there is actually artwork visible from the Game Boy Color game Metal Gear Ghost Babel, in the exact same area that you can find the Eternal Darkness logo. Back on the original, with thanks to this user over here, if you deliberately keep on dying during Mantis's fight, trigger the codec call with Campbell where he tells you how to beat Mantis via the controller ports. We did already cover this, but this is not what we're here to see. After you see that, die again, but we died loads of times just to be safe, and then he'll ask you a very humorous fourth wall question. Snake, is there some reason you can't use controller port 2? He'll then give you another secret to beating Mantis, just in case you can't actually switch the ports around. If you destroy the faces of those statues, you should be able to disturb Mantis's psychic powers. And with thanks to this user over here, after this bit on the Twin Snakes, just before the first battle with Sniper Wolf, Meryl will help you across this small square of mines. If you just so happen to run into one of them, she'll actually laugh at you and slap her behind. Thanks. On the original, however, she'll simply shrug her shoulders. What? With special thanks to this user, if Snake fails to escape when using the ketchup bottle, or does not use it at all, give Otacon a quick call. Due to not figuring out its true purpose, Snake will refuse to acknowledge Otacon's part in helping him escape in a codec call. Looks like you escaped! No thanks to you. Too bad. I thought you'd be able to figure out what my plan was. What are you talking about? However, if Snake does succeed in using the ketchup bottle to escape, he'll tell Otacon in a codec call that he can't believe it actually worked. And finally, with special thanks to this user, during the final confrontation with Raven, if you give Master Miller a quick call, he discloses a lot of information about your past and informs you a lot about your ancestors, only to then reveal a little too much and risk his true identity. There are even linguistic similarities between Athapaskan languages and ancient Japanese. You and he probably share many of the same ancestors. Master, I don't remember telling you that I was part Japanese. Thank you very much for watching and we hope that you enjoyed the Metal Gear Solid Easter Egg Hunting. But the question is, what exactly should we hunt through next? If you want to see any more of my stupid stuff, you can always have a look at one of my DVD menu reviews. Yes, you heard that right. You can also check out more videos to the side and don't forget to check out VGFacts.com. Thank you again and take care. Oh, Lord,